I have a question for you. Would you go to Europe and say single out a Polish person or a German person or an Italian person and then tell them, look, I'm from America. You're not Polish anymore. You're not German anymore and you're not Italian anymore. You're just white. That's it. Just forget about the rest. It's us against them. We're all white and, um, you know, everybody else is apparently now black because that is what people are doing to Africa. That is what people from America are doing to Africa. They are looking at Africa and just saying, well, you know, that's it, black. If you have any sort of color in your skin, you are not, um, uh, you cannot be something different. You cannot have your own identity. You have to just fall in under that black label and there's nothing more to be said about it. Not everyone in Africa, indigenously in Africa, is black, ethnically speaking. Um, you can go and take this up with a biologist or a, a, a somebody who does DNA, or you can take it up with people themselves. But I can tell you right now, there is a very great difference in Africa, if you if you are in the south of Africa, people look different. You can you can spot somebody who is from higher up. You can spot somebody who is from West Africa. There's a marked difference between people from West Africa and say Somalia. These things are as real as if you went to Europe and um, you go to southern Italy. You're going to expect to find people who are darker more olive complexioned, darker hair and shorter. And if you go to Holland or you go to uh, Finland or whatever, people are markedly taller and more fair. They're not better than or worse than, it's just simply the way they are. Regional differences happen. And Africa is filled with nationalities, with their own language, their own tradition, their own cultures, and in some cases, their own races. And no, I'm not talking about myself because Lord only knows what I'm supposed to categorize myself as in, you know, if, if I have to go by laws alone, um, I fall foul of the one drop law in Louisiana, which I think was still going until 1983. So, Let's take a look at the most indigenous race in Africa, the true people of Southern Africa, the people who are here before white people and before black people. Because I'm saying black people because that is what people in America who are primarily West African have identified themselves. Okay, West African that race, that ethnic group of people came all the way down to South Africa and they were still migrating downwards, sort of as the Dutch East India Company landed at the Cape and the truly indigenous people, the San people, were caught sort of on the wrong side of both ends. So let us take a look at what someone who is Kun has to say about this listen to what Omar San has to say about the situation. Omar is Afrikaans for grandmother. San refers to the San people. And to give you some context, she's talking about Julius Malema, who is a very inflammatory opposition politician in South Africa, who absolutely wants a, a revolution and to kill all the people who burn in the sun, basically, and take back the land. And what Omar San is saying is, you yourself, Julius Malema, have admitted that you were not indigenous to South Africa, and so this land actually belongs to us. Because, as I said, there's a difference over here between black people ethnically as a group, and the San. So let's listen to some of what she has to say. 
because it's something that is really important and talking to people. And so I want to find out if Julius Marino knew these people. Does he know the history about these people? Does he know anything? And what is it today about that? That he. What she's pointing out over there is that the San people don't look what you would consider typical African. They have very distinctive features. They are very beautiful people. And it's not one is better, one is worse. They're just different. It, that is nature is there are a lot of different people. So what she's trying to get at is that there is a denial among black politicians and landowners in Africa that the San are in fact the original indigenous inhabitants. And so they are being genocided, exterminated and pushed off their land. And this has been going on for a very long time since the uh, Bantu people started to come down from the north into the southern African region. And then we had the white people coming in into the Cape and they sort of met in the middle and forgotten in all of this are the San people who were actually the de facto owners of the land, if anybody was. If you want to go back to who was there first, these people were there first. It's a little baby. Yeah, it's only about the black people, not the people, not the sand people. So, uh, let's start with the uh, you know, people in Zimbabwe. We call people who come from outside Maguire. Well, just to hold up a moment. If you know anything about South Africa at all, it is notorious in Africa. And South Africans are very widely disliked for their xenophobia. This is black on black violence. I'm referring to black South Africans who dislike um, foreigners from other parts of Africa, Malawi, Zimbabwe, and so on. A lot of refugees come over here because of the wars. And there are also a lot of people who are here um, for economic reasons. So he uh, uses the word makwere kwere. That's a local word, makwere kwere, to describe foreigners. And if you have the time, have a look at xenophobic violence in South Africa. It is absolutely brutal. It breaks out from time to time and then gets under control again. And give it a while and it, it, it will start and they will kill uh, people from other parts of Africa. They will burn down their businesses. They will break their things. They will attack them. It's horrendous. Okay, so Malema is saying, we are also makwere kwere in South Africa, all of us black people, because he's definitely not speaking for people like me by his own uh, policy. Um, we are all makwere kwere because we all came from the north. Listen to what he says. We are makwere kwere ourselves. So when he's claiming, he's claiming that he, you know, the, the blacks in South Africa calling the other black uh, as foreigners. Mm -hmm. but what That's... he's saying is, as well as we are also foreigners ourselves because we come from where those people are coming from. So I think this video is going to be very much long. So I'll we'll we'll skip over a bit. There's a lot of stuff that we're going to dismantle because it's a lot of lies going on. Yeah, it is a lot of lies. Where those people come from. So when you say... us come from here, so, because we come from where those people come we from. We come from the north of Africa. We came from the north and found the koi and the sand. The koi and the sand. That's... The koi and the sand welcome us here. So first of all, Eunice Malema, you're lying. There is no welcome. There is no welcome. Okay. Uh, so subtitles are wrong. She said, Julius Malema, you are lying. There is no welcome. And that's because uh, there was a no real welcome. The San people were actually trading in the Cape. Um, and the, the Cape was not simply invaded by the Dutch, for those who don't know. The Dutch East India Company came over here to set up a canteen, basically to get refreshments for the long journey before the Suez Canal existed, the long journey to uh, India and the spice countries, 
which they took back to Europe and profited from, they weren't really interested in the land or anything else. And the Cape was originally uh, <laughs> as multicultural and multi-ethnic as you can find with people from all over the place, all around the world. And in fact, the native indigenous people to this area were trading and doing business and bartering at that time. And it's regrettable that they, as I say, they had to fend off the white people, broadly speaking, and then they were also brutalized by black people. And that is a policy which continues to this day. Uh, then, then a and the sand cave. There's literally no koi and the sand. There's only the sand. Okay, she's saying that's not the correct to say koi and sand. It's just the sand people. I mean, because it's in the, only in South Africa they refer to koi and the sun. There is no koi and the sun, and I emphasize that there's not, okay. there is no koi and the sun. Only people, koi, not koi. People, oh, uh, entire, you know, southern part of Africa. They called us southern part of Africa, but we are actually not the, we are not of southern part of Africa. We are the indigenous people of the entire Africa. Yes, but pay attention to this bit. You know, kill and all those type of things. Mm -hmm. I have made. Why I say we are the indigenous people of the entire Africa is well. Yeah. I have made. Uh, a video about that. Maybe if you can found this video of mine, you can go back and I have made an entire video about that. And I was talking about uh, the some people, the natives of the entire Africa, genocide and exterminated by blacks. So in the south of Africa, it is where the whites have found us, and that's why it looks like. Okay, so I'm guessing that if you are inclined to BLM way of thinking, then as far as you're concerned, she's black and she should just, you know throw away all of her heritage and so on and put up and shut up. That means you don't understand history in Africa. You don't understand how many ethnic conflicts there are. You don't understand how many different languages there are. I just want to clarify, San is the same as Bushman. Bushman is now seen as a pejorative. Omar San is saying she's back to using um, Bushman. And as far as I understand, it wasn't actually a pejorative term by the Dutch. They had a very difficult time understanding uh, the sand people. This is the language of clicks, 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 clicks. You don't find this north of Africa, in northern Africa anymore. I suppose they used to be over there, but now they're all gone. But in a bunch of speaking tribes, they don't really have clicks. You have cliques among the Kwaza, and those are because they mixed uh, with the San people to a large degree. So if you look at, at Nelson Mandela, you'll see he has distinctly San features, and to a lesser degree among the Zulu people. But if you go north, that's pretty much it. And there are people who speak entirely with cliques, but they're completely Bantu. I think the Dumara people in Namibia fit this category. It's incredibly complicated. It's not just one continent, one country, one people. There are lots of different people. So I just want you to take a look at a little bit of what she says over here to give you an idea of how serious uh, these issues really are. The, the black people in southern part of Africa. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, Namibia. Namibia, uh, you know, right now in Namibia, the people are being enslaved and taken, hostage taken by the Bambus in Namibia. And the president of Namibia is, uh, he is, as they are saying, the puppy puppet of the Bambus. Yes. Okay. So this is obviously very complicated. Namibia is an adjacent country to South Africa. And Namibia is, again, you know, they have their own people. And very many tribes, there are many um, different people, they speak different languages, they are different, and there is definitely a bit of um, conflict between them and the San people. And that's usually to do with a land because the San are obviously nomadic people, they are hunter-gatherers. And here we just have to stop for a moment because I have to say something that's very important. In the West, you tend to think technology good, 
you know, hunter gatherer backward. Uh, I've had this conversation very many times with a friend of mine, particularly who is Sikh from India. And he and I both agree completely that uh, there is a great deal of wisdom that modern society is lacking. And this is probably due to technology. And so what is happening? You, you think they haven't written down anything. Actually, oral tradition preserves history and stories better than written tradition because you translate things, you lose books and so on. But when it's passed from the mouths of the elders to the young people and so on in perpetuity, and all these stories are told around a campfire and so on, that information is very much intact and very reliable as a source. These people, they live in harmony with the land. They do not take more than what they need. They use every single part of the animal when they, when they hunt, they use every single part of the animal. The bones are turned into needles, the, the, the skin is turned, the hide is turned into um, clothing. There is no waste. They are extremely respectful. And what the sand people know, science has yet to discover. And this has been proven to be many, true many times where they have said things about plants or about stars and so on. And, Scientists have said, oh, you can't possibly know that, and then had to eat their words. We are losing wisdom that we could not fit into encyclopedias by marginalizing and dismissing these people as, you know, a little backward because they don't speak English properly like we do, and they don't, and I'm, I'm speaking about the hypothetical, you know, the general we, not, not me. They should be being listened to, their stories should be being taken down, they should be heard, they should be seen, people should learn about them, and instead everybody is feuding with each other over land which frankly is going to Chinese mining interests. So if anybody thinks the land over here is, uh, you know, they're going to take it from white people who don't really own that much land anymore and give it to black people, I've got news for you, there are actually mines detailed for Go and look at the areas, go and look at the Karoo and see where the gas reserves are and what farms they want to take away. And then talk to me again about, you know, redistribution and all this nonsense. And they're also taking their land away. What's very interesting to me is my grandfather was a doctor in Namibia and he actually treated a San tribe. And there was so... Uh, grateful to him that they sent two of their members who walked, I can't even think how, how far, just hundreds of miles in the blazing desert heat to come and thank him for what he did. And what is interesting about that is I have his original papers and it shows that the apartheid government of South Africa, who at that time was running Namibia, actually had a policy, you know, the apartheid government and my family, are, the, the, there's no love lost between, uh, between us. But with regard to the San people, who they there talk about as the Bushmen, there's a policy of non-interference, zero interference. Do not impose Western ways on these people. Leave them alone. Uh, don't go near them, don't don't tell them what to do, they leave them and let them be, which I think is very admirable. And there's in fact a wonderful story about a, a case my grandfather was involved in where they had to do cartwheels to get around. A, a member of the tribe had gone and uh, reported a crime to the white authorities and, and he basically done it spitefully and vengefully because there was no way that the white authorities would have gotten themselves involved otherwise. And now they were forced into a position where they had to take action or seen, be seen to be taking action. So they basically put on a show trial and then let the accused woman go. Um, 
which I thought was a very delicate way of handling things, considering the way they handled so many other things was so brutal and horrifying. But in that respect, they were very respectful of these people, uh, which I appreciate. Yeah, so not everybody in Africa is black. In the north of Africa, you have the Amazigh, uh, the Berbers. It's a distinct genetic group, you know, with their own genetic markers. And you have, here we have the San or the Khoisan as they are known. They're distinct genetic markers. Ancient, ancient tribe going back hundreds of thousands of years. A amazing that they have managed to maintain until now. And then also in East Africa, you have the Cushitic people, Cushites, and the Nilotic people, the Nilotes. So, and then you have, you know, the, what people commonly think of as black people. And you possibly even have indigenous people in the form of people like me, because I have some black blood. I have slave blood, not black slave, because the slaves weren't so much taken from here as brought here. And so if you had to ask me which group I belonged to, I generally, when I was a child, I defaulted to maybe German because it's very complicated. My family is very complicated. I'm a complete mongrel in a gene ocean rather than part of a gene pool. <laughs> My DNA literally comes from all around the world. And so as far as I'm concerned, I am indigenous to this continent. And yeah, people can say whatever they like, but then they'd have to find a category for me. That's it for now. I will leave Omar San's uh, details in um, down below. And thank you very much for watching. Chesra signing out.